Hey everyone, how's it going? In this video, um, we're going to go over um, the CAD model for our underwater vehicle here. So, um, in the last video, we went over the control board that controls a whole submarine. So now we can actually go into the submarine and see how the control board controls everything. I know I said like control like 10 times there, but <laughs> whatever. So, I guess we can start from the front and kind of move back. So in the very front, we have the nose cone, which is super simple. It just screws on to this little um, aluminum plate here. And um, it it's, uh, has a hole here. It fills up with water, mostly because if it was just completely plastic, I guess, not only would that waste a lot of filament, um, it wouldn't be as heavy as filling this whole um, nose cone area with water and a recurring theme you'll see throughout this whole design is just trying to get this whole thing as heavy as we can so when we first designed this like it was mostly empty and it was super light and it was super hard to get this to sink so we had to make a lot of design choices that centered around making this whole um, design actually uh, sink so anyways this fills up with water here and that there's a hole in this aluminum tube or this aluminum plate here that connects to a syringe which is part of our ballast so um, it's not modeled here but there's a little like uh, PTFE tube that is sealed and kind of like glued onto this little hole here and um, this this part of the syringe I um, can I take this out here this little part of the syringe actually just attaches to the whole um, attaches into that little tube and water from the outside goes through the nose cone uh, passes through this little plate right here and it's able to pass in through the syringe without having any leaks and it's been like super reliable so far i'm really um i think this design is kind of the best um, for this whole project right now and because this whole how this whole thing works is we have a plastic tube here and this whole inner part that you see right here, not including this and the back seal here. It slides in and out. If you saw the overview video, it slides in and out of this whole uh, tube. So this syringe will slide into the, uh, will slide in and it'll connect to the outside and that prevents leaks from going on. Um, other than that, we also have this uh, front seal here. I can kind of turn this off and this is this has o-rings here, but it's not actually removable. It's sealed on there and you can't take it off. Um, the back one is removable, so we can actually take the whole inner part out of the submarine, but this part is actually permanent. So anyway, moving back. Um, so like mentioned before, um, to actually, um, for our ballast, we're using a 500 cubic centimeter syringe and um, it's pretty big. Um, I wish we could get a bit more water in there, but this was the biggest syringe I could find. And how it really works is um, we have a stepper motor here that spins this uh, threaded rod. And within this little blue kind of plunger thing, um, there's some threads here. And um, if we move it clockwise, this whole blue plunger moves out and pulls water in and if we move it counterclockwise um, it'll spin and push this whole plunger uh, back in and push water out so it's super duper simple and pretty much how it works is this whole kind of lump here um, there's supposed to be a limit switch here and if you don't know what a limit switch looks like I guess oops um, let's see right here I need a Get rid of this. This is, oh no. So this gray part really shouldn't be here. I should delete that, but this is what a limit switch is and super simple when something hits it, um, it just connects to uh, leads and it gives us continuity, I guess. And there's supposed to be one back here. Like I said before, like this is definitely not a really good model. So I'm missing a bunch of stuff. But um, there's a limit switch here, and when the whole program starts off, we just spin the stepper motor, 
and until this thing moves back and hits a limit switch. And once it hits a limit switch, we know then exactly where this whole mechanism is. So when we start up, we don't know where this whole plunger is. So we pull it back until it hits a limit switch and that's how we find out the position of this plunger. Um, so while I'm here, I will actually, like I said, this is a very bad model. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this because um, that's not supposed to be there. There we go. So um, anyways, I can re put that on there. Um, right here we have this little kind of super small board here with a bunch of header pins on it. This shouldn't also be here either. So I wanted to measure temperature and like the solubility metrics um, directly from the syringe and like have some sensors in the syringe and read from there. Um, so this board would, all the sensors, like the temperature sensor and everything would connect to this board and this board would connect to the main board and feed it data. But like having wires and like holes in the syringe was just like super complicated to connect all these sensors to. So we actually don't end up using this tiny little board here. So um, this, I guess, shouldn't be there. There's no sensors actually up here in the front part of our vehicle. So moving back, we have a uh, the NEMA 17 stepper motor. Super simple, it's in a bunch of 3D printers. And around the syringe, we actually have um, this like kind of cylinder looking thing. And like mentioned before, um, we're trying to get this whole thing as heavy as possible. So this kind of sleeve, uh, what it does is, um, let's see, let's get rid of this lid. It's hollow and we fill this with li these little copper plated lead pellets and it adds a bunch, I think it's about two pounds of weight that fits into this whole compartment here. And that just, not only does that add weight to the whole vehicle um, and make it heavier, it also gets rid of a lot of the air volume because air is very buoyant. It just takes up space that way the, the vehicle is able to sink. So this fills up with these little uh, copper plated lead pellets and we just glue this lid on and it just slides right onto the syringe. So moving back here, uh, we have, so in the original videos, you may have seen this whole thing moves back and forth to kind of change our center of mass um, so we can add pitch control. But like I said, like 50 times before this, we're trying to make this whole submarine as heavy as possible. So we actually don't have pitch control like this whole stepper motor mechanism here and everything is non-functional because we have these two compartments. Um, I guess I try to make this a bit more visible. We have these two compartments right here that, um, that fill with lead and get rid of this lid right here. Um, so um, these two compartments also fill with lead pellets um, and it's about eight pounds of just lead pellets and they also just take up room um, just so there's less air within the whole um, vehicle and this just helps it sink. This was absolutely necessary to make it sink. Um, with all this weight, this is with these three compartments, we have 10 pounds of lead, lead pellets um, and it's about, it's a bit more than neutrally buoyant. We have to get some weight off of it but this thing actually has to be super heavy for it to sink. So we have these compartments filled with lead, but now we don't actually have pitch control anymore. This whole um, ballast thing doesn't actually work anymore. So right here we have just these little compartments and these just hold all our batteries and um, all the wiring associated with all the batteries. And then the wires feed outside and there's, it's not shown in the model, like I said, it's a bad model. There's a uh, five volt buck converter. So if you watch the ECADS uh, video, um, I said that the five volt reg linear regulator was not efficient on our board. So I actually got an external breakout five volt buck converter that connects to the battery and gives us a clean five volt voltage to our control board here. So these stepper motors connect to uh, the pins right here um, to our main board and everything is just controlled through here. We have all our sensors, we're gonna have our cameras, all our data logging, stuff like that. And then um, last but not least, we have this seal right here and this is removable, 
has two O-rings and we um, insert the whole um, the whole inner part into the uh, into the tube and then we seal it off with this little um, this little part here. It's not shown in the model, but we also have a pressure transducer, a thermistor, and our total dissolved solid sensor actually back here. So like I said before, the original plan was to have the sensors in the ballast, but it's a lot easier just to drill a bunch of holes in this seal, have the wire stick out and just seal it all together. So that's what we do, and it just connects directly into our board right here. So anyways, let me just show all our bodies, show all our components. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I guess finally we have these wings. Super simple, they're made from aluminum and this little whole thing just slides on the outside of this plastic tube. And the wings provide um, that forward force. When we're diving, these wings push the um, submarine forward. So that's how this whole thing actually moves forward. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I actually, like, I really like this design. Like when we want to like change stuff or remove stuff, we literally just have to take this whole inner part, it's all connected, just out of the submarine or out of this plastic tube and stick it back in. So it's a super nice design. Um, I think it's like maybe like 15 pounds. I'm gonna have to do a mass measurement, but super heavy, but we finally got it to be almost neutrally buoyant. So yeah, that's about it. Um, like I said, it's a really bad model, but if you guys want to check it out, maybe play around with it for yourself, all of the CAD model files are in the GitHub repository linked down below. Um, if you have any questions, anything like that, just feel free to just leave it down in the comments. And yeah, other than that, have a great day.